Hello and welcome back. In our journey to set up a project from scratch, we are at the point where we can finally compile our TypeScript code using TSC, that is the TypeScript compiler. However, we don't actually need to run the TSC command like this. We can use npm scripts to simplify things a little bit. If we go back to our editor and open package.json again, we can add a scripts section where we can define custom commands. For example, we can have a script called build that corresponds to running TSC with the same options we used on the command line, that is root dir source and out dir dist. Now from our terminal, let's delete the dist folder first. On bash, the command is rm-rf, but if you're using the Windows command prompt, you would use rmdir instead, and then the folder name. So now we can type npm run build, and as you can see, npm executes TSC with the options we specified. And just to check, the dist folder has been recreated as well. Note that we can call our scripts whatever we like. I've called this one build because it's the build step of our project, but you could call it foo and then type npm run foo and it would still work perfectly fine. Now that we know about npm scripts, we can add another one for the typings. We mentioned that this typings.json file contains all the type definitions we need for this project and that are installed into the typings folder. Now, if we use some version control system, like get, for example, you wouldn't put the typings folder into version control. Let's create an example .gitignore file. If you're not familiar with Git, I do recommend learning about it because any real software project uses version control and Git is the most popular version control system these days. Anyway, .gitignore lists all the files that we don't want to store into version control. And here we'd typically have the dist folder because it's generated by our build step the node modules folder because it contains lots of stuff downloaded by npm and as long as we list all our dependencies in package.json we can easily download them again by running npm install. Similarly we want to exclude the typings folder because it contains stuff downloaded by the typings tool. Now suppose we keep this project in a git repository somewhere when we get this project from the repository, we or somebody else working on the project, we don't get any of the folders we listed here. So if we go to our terminal and delete all those folders, that is test, node modules, and typings, then we are in the same state as somebody getting a fresh copy of the project. So from this state, how can we get in a position where we can build our project again? Well, we can run npm install and that would download all the dependencies, but that wouldn't include the type definitions and we would need to run the typings command separately. Ideally, when we run npm install, it should download everything we need, including the type definitions. We can do that by opening our package.json again and here we can specify a special script called post install. As the name suggests, this script will be executed by npm automatically after the install. So here we can do typings install, and now we can go back to our terminal and type npm install, and it should do everything for us. It printed out all the packages it installed, but if we scroll up, we should also see that it ran our post install script, executing typings install, and downloading the core.js type definitions. Good. We can check in the editor. Let's refresh the files just in case. And we have the node modules folder with all the packages, but also the typings folder with the type definitions. So at this point, we should be able to execute npm run build and it should compile our code successfully. And in our editor, we can see the dist folder with the generated JavaScript code. Great. 
Now, we made some good progress, but we cannot really run our application yet. We have some JavaScript files, but we cannot use them in our page as they are. Let's see what happens if we try anyway. If we edit index.html and add a script with source dot dot test main.js, that's the relative path to the generated main.js file, and we open this file, let me drag index.html and drop it into a new browser tab. It's just showing the loading text. And if we open the JavaScript console, there's an error saying require is not defined. If we open main.js, the require function is here. The generated ES5 code uses require where our original code had the import statement but we'll need some additional library that provides support for modules to actually have a require function defined. That's why in our previous examples, we used system.js, but for this project, we'll use Webpack instead. And we'll see how to use it in the next lecture. I'll see you later.